Amen. Amen. I, I dare not hold you long. I'm almost done. Uh, but let me give you a subject uh, for today. Uh, today's subject is a reflection of Palm Sunday. A reflection of Palm Sunday. Uh, I know some are saying, well, Pastor, you didn't read the text. No, uh, I, I didn't. Uh, but I have read the text. Amen. Uh, and the text consists of Matthew, uh, Mark, Luke, and John. Because you can find uh, uh, the, the events of Palm Sunday in all four Gospels. And I extracted something from each one of them, but I can assure you that I won't keep you all day. Amen. Amen. But uh, a reflection of Palm Sunday. Uh, I struggle with this, Reverend Young, because I was trying to uh, find something to preach about uh, dealing with Palm Sunday and one of the things came across my mind, uh, 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 it was in my spirit that, uh, why don't you talk about the triumphant entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem? I thought about that uh, hard and long, and then uh, something else moved in my spirit and say that uh, you do know that there were two crowds there that day. Uh, why don't you talk about the two crowds? And then something else moved in my spirit and say, not only talk about the two crowds, but uh, you, you can easily come up with a sermon about the donkey. Ah, but then I said, no. And, uh, and then something else jumped out at me when I was almost done with the sermon. I almost uh, put the finishing touch on it. And then something said to me, uh, you, you, you can't stop without talking about the question. There was a question asked in one of those gospels. So I decided that uh, the spirit moved up on me and moved in me and said, talk about all of them, Lord. And so, so I decided that we'll just deal with a reflection of Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is that Sunday that uh, Jesus came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. And this was that Sunday before he was crucified. Before Jesus was crucified, he came riding into uh, 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 Jerusalem. And it's known as the triumphant entrance. And Jesus, he did make a triumphant entrance into Jerusalem. He was uh, 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 making, he was triumphant uh, humility over pride and worldly uh, grandeur. Uh, he was putting poverty over affluence. He was putting meekness and gentleness over rage and malice. And I just do believe, I just believe that on this morning that Jesus, he wants to make a triumphant entrance into somebody's life. Yeah, uh, he wants to give you victory this morning. He wants to give you victory over your sin. He wants to give you victory over Satan. And I said earlier, somebody may have already uh, got your salvation secured. Jesus has already secured your salvation. Well, Jesus wants to come out uh, and make a triumphant entrance into your situation. Don't know what your situation might be this morning, but uh, perhaps it's uh, 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 you got sickness in your body. Jesus, he wants to give you victory over that sickness. It might be anxiety in your mind. He wants to give you victory over your anxiety. Look, he wants to make a triumphant entrance into your life this morning. Uh, uh, how do you know, Walker? Well, the Bible lets me know in Revelation, the third chapter, around the 20th verse, where he says that, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, open. I'll come in and sup with him and he with me. My brothers and sisters, Jesus wants to make a triumphant entrance into your life this morning. Not only do I see the triumphant entrance, but I see the two crowds. There were two crowds there that day. What are the two crowds, Walker? You have the Christ crowd and you have the critical crowd. Yeah, you have the Christ crowd and you have the critical crowd. The Christ crowd was the one that was there crying, Hosanna! Hosanna. Luke said they not only was crying Hosanna, but Luke said that they was giving him some praises. Uh, you do know again, Hosanna simply means uh, 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 request of God, save now. Or I beseech thee, save now. Hosanna, that compound word saying, save us right now. So in essence, they was crying out to Jesus and they said, son of David. So they were uh, acknowledging his messiahship and saying that we believe you to be the messiah. We want you to save us 
now. I want you to know that that's what he does. He saves in an instant. Look, it doesn't take him all day to save you. Look, uh, he can save you. The old preacher used to say he can, sit, he can save you right where you're sitting right now. All you got to do is give him your, your heart and, and, and invite him in. He can save you. But Luke said that he also, well, they also were crying, uh, giving him praises for what he had already done. Luke said they were praising him because this was a crowd that uh, were, were, were perhaps around when he raised Lazarus from the dead. This was a crowd that was around when when he gave uh, the blind men their sight. This was the crowd that was around when he raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. So now they are saying to him, uh, uh, giving him praises for what he has done. But they're making a request of what they want him to do. But then you had a critical crowd there. The critical crowd, uh, uh, Luke said that the critical crowd, they said, uh, won't you tell them to hush up? Won't you tell them to be quiet there? They're doing all of this, uh, uh, keeping up all of this uh, ruckus and this commotion. Tell them to be quiet. Uh -huh. You know what Jesus responded to this critical crowd? He responded to the critical crowd by making them be quiet. Because uh -huh. Jesus, what he tells them is, if they will hold their peace, yeah. so then the rocks will begin to cry. Uh -huh. That's what Jesus told them. He said that if they hold their peace, now, I don't know exactly what Jesus was saying, but Jesus was saying that if they hold their peace, that the rocks will praise me. I know they would. Or was Jesus saying that if they hold their peace, then the rocks are going to condemn them for holding their peace. But I just do believe that if it's for you in here, and I'll make fire, that can testify that I don't need no rock. Yeah. Right now for me. Because uh, he hadn't done for a rock what he's done for me. Yeah. Yeah. One song said, you can't tell it like I can tell it. Yeah. What the Lord has done for me. Yeah. Say, so pick me up and turn me around. Place my feet on a solid ground. Look, you can't tell it like I can tell it. What the Lord has done for me. Yeah, yeah there were two crowds there. There was the Christ crowd and there was the critical crowd and Thirdly, I see the donkey. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Matthew said that it was an adult donkey and a, yeah. uh, uh, a small donkey. Yeah. The other gospel writers, they just talk about the young donkey. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, some say that uh, because they are th different writers and they wrote from their own perspective. So one may ask, which one is right? And I would say, yes. Yeah, both of them are right, but they just wrote from their own perspective. There very well were two donkeys there, but uh, 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 Mark, Luke, and John, they decided just to concentrate on the, the young donkey. But uh, Matthew, being the one that always wants to engage the Jews, he told them about the two donkeys. Because uh, the one donkey was the one that had been, the adult donkey, the one that had been ridden before. The one that uh, said that they symbolized the Jews because they symbolized the Jews because the Jews had been under uh, the burden of the law. And then it said the young donkey that had never been written on before, they represent the Gentile. Uh, because they had never been written on before, uh, uh, they were wild and they were uh, uh, untamed. So then it, it was saying that Jesus is coming for the Jews and the Gentiles. I don't know about you, but that blesses my heart right there because I do know that I'm not a Jew. And I know there are some radical groups out there that say that we are the Jews. Well, all I know is he came for me. Well, a Jew or Gentile, he came for me. Yeah. But when I look at the donkey, I must hurry to a close when I look at the donkey. Uh, uh, you notice Jesus told the, the disciples, go into the town. You're going to find a donkey tied up. Jesus tell them to loose him. What I see with that donkey, I see some similarities with myself. I can see Jesus loosening me from sin. Detaching me from sin. In other words, uh, there was a kind of the donkey had to be released. Yeah, Jesus, he, he 
knows how to release us from what's got us bound and tied down. Oh, release them. Never been written on before. Bring them to me. Now, here's what I do know. Uh, donkey is one of the stubborn animals that you can ever come in contact with. And brother uh, Kincaid, if he had never been written on before, oh, I can see him just, when they were bringing him, I can see him just bucking and jumping and twisting and turning. And, and that reminds me of us. We were wild as a buck deer before the Lord saved our soul. We were out there doing something in it and everything. Y'all might as well testify this morning. Don't make me call your name this morning. Yeah. Well, we were out there doing something in it and everything. And my dad would say that we thought we were big enough and bad enough to do. Uh, so only did Jesus have to release the donkey. He had to reform the donkey. Yeah, he, he had to reform us. And, and, and when he reformed us, when he released us, when he reformed us, we were able to do what he needed us to do. Yeah. Yeah. What, did the, what did the donkey do? Somebody said, what did the donkey do? Well, I'll tell you what the, uh, the donkey did. He just raised Jesus up. <laughs> when Jesus got on the donkey, the donkey raised Jesus up. And that's what Jesus did for us. He released us, he reformed us, so we could raise him up. Somebody missed me, brother David. Somebody missed me right there. Uh, how to reach the masses. Men of every birth. For an answer, Jesus gave the key. John 12, 32. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Now, Ms. Ivy, if I was hollering this morning, I would just look back and say, Preachers, will you help me live Jesus? I asked the choir members, Why? Will you help me live Jesus? Deacons, will you help me live Jesus? And then I would tell them, Don't just help me lift them. Uh, to a normal height, but help me to live in higher and higher and higher. I'm done, I'm through. Let's get ready to go to the house, but I got one more for you. The question they asked over in the book of Matthew. The question they asked when they came in crying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Uh, to the son of David, Hosanna in the highest. And it said that the uh, city was moved. Those in the city, I just do declare that if we cry out to the Lord, somebody's going to be moved around us. And, and it said that they were moved to the point where they had to ask a question. What they asked was, who is this? Yeah, yeah, they, 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 they asked, who is this? It said the multitude gave them an the answer. That this is Jesus Christ. The prophet of Nazareth. Yeah, yeah. And I just stop by to let you know that the world is still asking the same question this morning. The question that the world is asking this morning is, who is this? And the Bible tells us that we ought to be ready to give an answer. Yeah, the world is asking us, Brother Troy, who is this? We need to let them know that this is uh, the first and the last. This is the Alpha and Omega. This is the beginning and the end. We need to let them know that this is uh, the great I am. This is the good shepherd. This is the bomb in Gilead. We need to let them know who he is. We need to let them know he is the one uh, that got on the nature train. Rode it through 42 generations. Uh, got off the Bethlehem of Judea. We need to let them know he is the one uh, that stayed around for 33 years. Uh, but one Friday uh, on a hill called 